one two one two microphone test testing one two hello everyone welcome to best materials project channel news for the 12th of uh so 12th of may 2022 how are we everyone what we hope everyone's well so today we're just going to discuss the best materials project where we are up until now uh today's podcast uh, we're using uh adobe audition and obviously the xbox controller with a uh, gaming headset just straight into adobe audition uh so we've been uh six months building the website and uh right now it's just a crummy wordpress blog truth be told uh you can't actually do anything else with it because the hosting package is a shared tennessee hosting package it's been a, it's been a painful uh six months really it's been pretty heavy uh so yeah, six months ago we decided to get on get onto the web and get in get involved with the web and Adobe, basically. Uh, the the quality of the channel and that is improved a little bit. We've managed to use all of the Adobe products to do a few odds and ends like print a video or create uh, cool graphics. My skills got a little bit better. It started out really garbage, truth be told, but now it's getting pretty good. But still not good enough uh, for the industry. Uh, generally speaking we managed to do all sorts we went all down all sorts of little nooks and crannies we did all sorts of explorations we built the uk's cheapest gaming pc an amd 3000g it came in at 250 quid all in like and uh, we could boot call of duty on it and load in and then it crash just simply just weren't simply wasn't powerful enough also on that machine with the amd 3000g there's been issues with onboard audio across all operating systems. So we tested Ubuntu, Fedora, Windows 10, and uh, Windows Server 2022 as well. So we we uh, explored those avenues. Uh, the only version of Linux that actually got it to work fine was the uh, Kali Linux. So uh, yeah, Kali Linux. It seems to work, it seems to work great on Kali Linux basically and you don't get any issues if it does fault it recovers uh it recovers almost straight away uh, so we've managed to track the fault down to the onboard sound card the amd 3000g has onboard graphics because it has a g in its product number so that means graphics so the ones with a g uh mean that they've got onboard graphics inside of the microchip which is a pretty heavy microchip there uh, you can ref- look if you have rumors around on the youtube channel there's a video uh, putting it together uh, so the fault does not occur if you use a traditional SSD hard disk or a traditional platter hard disk like a SATA hard disk it only is occurring because there is these new kind of little NVMe hard drives the little slice drives uh, something that was new to me actually uh, so that takes up early PCI lanes. From what I can fathom, it takes up some PCI lanes or it gets priority PCI lanes that with the motherboard having onboard sound on the motherboard and also with uh, the AMD chip having sound inside of the HDMI inside of the onboard graphics as well, all clamoring for PCI lanes, but also the priority uh, that the NVM disk gets on PCI lanes is causing an issue or conflict. Uh, like I mentioned, the only uh, way to resolve it really is uh, get a, a chip that does not have onboard graphics, but in which case you're on for a, a, an external graphics a GPU, so you'd need a, a, a graphics card. That's one way of getting around the issue. Obviously, money I don't have at the minute. Or if you could blank out at UEFI BIOS level or even at, at motherboard level, which means you'd have to modify your, your motherboard by removing the onboard sound from the motherboard or alternatively just use an SSD solid straight that uh, solid state drive the SATA SSD or an, an also traditional uh, SATA you know platter hard drive so at the minute there's, there's no way around it uh, we had had we've thrown whatever base material projects at it and uh, basically if you're suffering from that issue of course you've just got to use uh, like I mentioned, Kali Linux 
which is also, I've not tried it yet, but it's very reminiscent of Audio Visual Linux as well. Uh, it's a bit like a Ubuntu Studio, it's called Audio Visual Linux. We ran that uh, in the very beginning of Base Materials projects, literally a decade ago. Literally, it must be 10 years now, like maybe maybe nine. Uh, but yeah, that is a great little uh, bit of kit, that Audio Visual Linux. Obviously today, all, uh, in today's world, obviously we have to use a paid for product, Adobe Creative Cloud. And really to get the maximum use out of it, uh, you need to have the website as well. Obviously we can do what we want with the website, have users accounts, payment processing and stuff like that. But the WordPress thing... Uh, it's another. It's the, the amount of burdens that we've took took on with this website project and with the Adobe Creative Cloud is extremely burdensome. Like, like as compared to what we were dealing with traditionally in the past, we were doing just basically audio engineering and post production using Ableton and out of the box analog mixed desk and out of the box analog hardware. Something that if we probably going forward or revisit, uh, we tried obviously to throw on the channel some visual, some C++ projects as well. Again, the quality is not the best and really could do with bringing in extra help and maybe a team because as an individual, it's probably impossible to get that sort of result individually. Like it's, at, at least not in real time or near to real time is what employees are looking for really is somebody can crank this out 24-7-365. We've looked at all sorts really. So if you're wondering about getting into audio engineering, post-production, and getting into uh, film and video and animation, of course, all those sorts of digital production skill sets, we definitely recommend uh, Avid Pro Tools First and Avid Media Composer First. It's a free product uh, from Pro Tools, from Avid. The company's called Avid. So if you're not aware of that, if you want to, it's a great, it's a great start. Because using that, uh, you can make beats, you can uh, record a podcast. It's got some cool features inside of it that really are... The industry itself, the technology has gone a long way. We're in a weird position at the minute, though, it's to do with generations. Like, there's all kinds of Thunderbolt and USB 1, 2 and 3 and all kinds of, like, issues, like, and uh, especially, like, in the music game. If you've got an old... Uh, old type of mixing desk from the 90s and the 2000s all to about 2010s that has automatic faders then you might struggle uh, to uh, get that to work with the present windows and apple and stuff like because there's all sorts of generational issues right? and we happen to be in the middle of that right now with the intel sort of thing and pci5 and ddr5 like, and obviously there's these new generation uh, PCI 5 graphics cards that are just about coming onto the market now. But significantly expensive. You, you're looking at spending about £3,000, uh, in all honesty. That's a heck of a lot of dosh. Like, I suppose if you got it on credit or finance and it, was, it wasn't too bad, the monthly payments, it was reasonable, it'd be worth doing that now because uh, this generation... It's probably there's not going to be a DDR6 or a PCI6 for many a year, five to ten years maybe, realistically. So yeah, that three thousand pound PC with the latest graphics card and the latest Intel chip and the latest kind of RAM, yeah, it is a good uh, a good stepping stone up in performance. If truth be told, this uh, PCI 5 gen and this I, 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 uh, new Intel 12th gen and DDR5 RAM gen, there's a slight increase in performance, yes. But there's propagational delay, something that we're using audio, if we, we can read through acoustics by in, introducing slight delay along all of the channels on the mixing desk, so we can use intentional propagational delay to puff up. Uh, piano and stuff like that like so so if your piano doesn't sound too hot maybe you want to add a little tiny m delay on it so it, there's something like that it, it going on in the industry so not all of the software has been updated like all of a sudden like all the products have been updated to work on the new platforms and then people at the back of the queue are getting left behind because only you know only the people at the front of the queue with you know these 3000 gaming pcs or the latest greatest actually do get tech support like the companies themselves 
uh, discontinue tech support on products like you know throughout the variety of generations no longer bring out software updates firmware updates and then you get compatibility issues something that analog is never going to have that issue like because it, it's not dependent on pcs and it's not dependent on software that's out of the box mixing and obviously drum machines and synthesizers uh something that we had a bit of a pop at last november we got a drum machine in uh, we was using a, a piano and a drum machine to see what so so what we could cook up in the studio so here we are uh yeah so the next steps okay so next steps going forward uh well what it was was we uh, had issues well we managed to get a sort of a home network going with a windows box and a linux server box and we had them talking to each other and we had the linux apache mysql php stack installed in it and we had to go into the command line and we had to create ssl certificates and ssh shell in then we had to create FTP user accounts and FTP in, uh, and we had to have two computers talking to each other uh, through a network switch. So uh, we go back on the Adobe one. However, we only got it going about seventy-five percent of the way. So we could use Adobe Creative Cloud tools, and we could log on to the Linux Apache MySQL PHP box, which is where the website was was uh, being served from. So we could use our mobile phone or our tablet. We could hit it directly internally or within our own little home network, like, and it would serve the web page, like. Uh, so anybody who's logged into that local network segment could go to the website and uh, hit the web page and you know do whatever with the web page. Uh, we also tied in all those credentials after epic amount of learning journey. Really, absolutely epic. Really, it's unbelievable really uh really it, absolutely unbelievable like absolute crazy really uh that's why we, we came to the conclusion that you know c sharp 6 and dot net uh dot net 10 on a windows server box if you can make it public facing so you don't have to pay the client access licenses it's definitely that any projects that are started today and anything else is, is going to be extremely expensive basically and in terms of the new hardware it's not integrated even your open source compilers aren't really integrated into it the issue is you're dealing with every evolving technology and every evolving standards and every evolving feature sets so you really need to learn project skills more than anything else so i think that basically project skills really allow you to rotate all the other sections for example so today we're cutting a podcast using Adobe Audition. Uh, we're using an Xbox controller, a wired Xbox controller, if you refer back to the YouTube channel, and a gaming headset. And after we finish cutting the po podcast, we're going to use Adobe Premiere Pro to print a, a 1080p video. And then obviously we're just going to upload it to YouTube, what have you, as per usual. I mean, obviously the easiest way probably is just use... Uh, a PC gaming headset and OBS streamer, really. Uh, but there's a bunch of stuff. When you use this Adobe Creative Cloud product suite, there's a bunch of stuff in there that's kind of used in Hollywood. It's used in, like, television production, uh, audio books, etc., uh, etc., etc., et 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 3D motion graphics. Uh, and the ability for the Adobe Creative Cloud to create bl uh, bundles, okay, so you can create a bundle and it can you can shoot off that bundle into uh, audio visual projects into websites and into print so business cards brochures posters flyers uh product packaging and materials so there's opens up the skill set to a whole entire industry so in basic materials project episode one podcast one we started out with a mobile phone a hands-free kit and the soundcloud app uh, which is a, uh, which I was started. Of course, the SoundCloud out later on updated itself. Then we moved into using uh, Audacity. We had a look at Avid Pro Tools first and Avid Media Composer first, and we pumped for you know the in, in, the industry standard Ableton as well. We could also record Ableton in there, 
people by now all know how to build a home studio and stuff, make some beats on Ableton. We had a look at the Isotope plugin bundle as well, as another thing we covered, uh, and the SSL bundle uh, along the way, uh, which is, is cheap, it's cheap really for what you're getting. But we ran into issues using personal computers and stuff like that. Uh, so we started to look at the real world sort of things, the things that I can cut a podcast or record a band, for example, or make some beats or record a DJ set without actually depending on a personal computer and all the complexity that it costs to manage a computer, really. It's a, a never-ending update, you know, it's update, 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 you know what I'm saying? It's on a daily basis, it's, it's continuously updating, like, so there's... All that sort of like project sort of skills we need to use, uh, like to get to get to a position in the centre of it all where we can successfully manage all of the parts. Like so, to avoid all that, we got uh, had, we had a look at the analog studio. We built an analog channel strip with a pre-imposed EQ and a one-lane channel strip, and sticking a solid state recorder on the end of that. We had doubled up our uh, audio interfaces, so we got a Focusrite right eighteen twenty. Uh, second gen, and we've got a Behringer UMC 820, which broke. We're still waiting for it to get back to us from repair. It was under warranty and guarantee, and we were just using twin fiber optic cables, Toslink cables. And then we were using all that output into an analog mixing desk in the real world and mixing, graphic EQing, using compression limitation, or a little bit of... In oh, we, could, we didn't actually hit delay on that, actually, but rotation so we could place things in, in spatial, you know, stereo space. We can use the pots left and right. And we had our we had our studio monitors plugged into our mixing desk, not our audio interface. Oh, it's a little bit different. Uh, and looked at how we do some orgs and sends. So VST plugins work just like that in the real world. So orgs and sends as well. So we use cables in the real world and wire everything up. And obviously you can get a channel patch strip and what have you. So without depending on a personal computer, so in the end we'd get an out-of-the-box solid-state recorder. Cheapest in the UK it had been at a Denon or Tascam, you can get them from 200 quid to about 230 quid. You just plug a USB or a microchip into it and press record. Make sure no amplifier signals go into the mixing desk or you'll blow it up, like you'll break it. And it's the same, same with the out-of-the-box equipment. And obviously we always started with the uh, uh, clean power supply unit that gave us 10 kettle leads on one switch. It's a bit of safety and protection as well for your expensive audio equipment. The only equipment we've damaged during all of this time actually is that bearing your audio in the face. Like, but it was frosty right out of the box. I should have just took it back there and then. Uh, but that being said, uh, what else would we do? We changed our studio monitors from old Roland monitors to some uh, KLK Rocket Freeze, the cheapest KLK Rockets. There, but still, them them Roland ones are like twenty years old, twenty odd years old now. Like they they could do with being repaired. Or amazing sound, heavy as hell. A lot. Ah, Roland are a company from, uh, from Japan. Obviously, Roland are famous for the techno uh, sort of musical instruments and stuff like that. So yeah, we covered the waterfront. Uh, we hit the dual monitor thing, which you can't really do on the screen capture with OBS stream. So we we'll have to work on that. So the dual monitor set up for Ableton, obviously, it's a lot easier to see everything like that. So there's uh, just one thing missing really, and that's uh, we need to get back to the projects and get get on some artists. We need to, need to start bringing on some artists, some rappers, and some grime artists, or some electronic dance music artists. Or even some bands that if you need audio or pulse, hit the SoundCloud and follow everything from the SoundCloud. You can send us your stems and uh, we can put them through the studio and get them back to you. And is in particular, we've been specialised a little bit in long format audio books. Uh, there's a big market on uh, things called Audible and Amazon Cloud. Right? So you can do long format audio books entirely out of the box. Assume it's already been uh, recorded. I just use solid state recorder, analog channel strip, two solid state recorder, and as long as it's on the clean power supply, you can run that 30 hours, 20 hours, 30 hours, 50 hours. Uh, something that we managed to tank Ableton. Uh, I think it was seven or eight hours long format audio, but there wasn't enough internal symbols inside of Ableton to cope with that much audio. Like, so it actually ran out of internal symbols, like it couldn't mathematically do it which is something that analog doesn't have to deal with. So there are 
differences between the analog and the digital realm like you know it, there are sort of differences in the digital realm and the analog realm they're interchangeable really so you know if you want to spend 100 quid on music gear or whatever you're better off getting something analog obviously a hundred pound in vxt plugins goes a long way so the other uh, side of the best material project was the dj mix as well so for that we got in uh tractor controller the cheapest tractor controller in the uk about 230 quid like which is all you need really and obviously hitting band camp up for some top row and bass like it's getting to that it's getting to that time of the year where it's time to refill your record collection like like everybody's been in in winter producing in winter then in spring they get the masters done and then they have some material to go out and dj with fantastic uh and what else we've we covered and that's it really so there's only one more area we need to look into, and that's this uh, special effects and motion graphics. Like, uh, like I said, uh, you know, it's all new to me. Like, I can do audio and post easily. I like know how to do masters and stuff like that. But you know, to branch out and keep developing new skills and learn, learn, learn next. We did have a little sniff at crypto and that, but that's just too crazy. You know, what I mean, uh, that's just. I don't really get it. <laughs> like, and a lot of artists are getting into NFTs as well, so they're selling the music and their uh, artwork and stuff like that as NFTs, which is uh, something. We, if it becomes that big, you're gonna need to know about it. If it becomes that massive, the, the industry goes that way. But generally speaking, you know, there's like the individual junglist, like the the individual drum and bass head. Like, yeah, that back in the 90s and that, that's kind of what it had to be. Really, if you go back then, if you go back, it had to be like that. Like, you know, in terms of the seed and that. But now there's, you know, it's a team sport, I think. Really, that's something that we perhaps like, we perhaps could do with bringing on project members, like and getting, getting it, getting it utilised fully. Uh, relatively speaking, it's still... There's some expenses, like your Ableton cost money, your, your VST plugins cost money, like uh, they're a bargain for what they are and can get amazing results. So we always use the Isotope plugins, like it's, you know, it's a no-brainer really. Not We've always uh, been concentrated on, on post-production and sorting out post, so we never really went into production, like we just basically relied on people hitting up SoundCloud with their stems. So if you've got a podcast that needs audio work, doesn't sound too great, or if you need any help at all, contact us via the SoundCloud page. And uh, obviously, like, see if there's anything we can do to help. But the Best Me Steals Project Studio, we're definitely looking to expand. Like, uh, obviously, it costs money to take on employers and stuff like that. You can end up just being... Like, like what's happened to me, really, is just learning that, learning so much... It's been like a learning experience really, it's been tough, uh, but the product, like the basic materials project, the product at the end of the day is you, like because the whole point of it is project skills and uh, self-development, which you're going to need, right, so uh, it's a bit like when we did the C++ ASAP, you know, there's millions of C++ projects out there and, and millions of programmers, but they can't actually get it to build, like they don't, they don't actually know how to do it, they can't like the missing the difference between rookie to, rookie and pro ain't it like that's that difference isn't it there's a difference right between you know like the idea of like cali Linux hackers and all that it's all good and well and all that stuff but commerce and industry doesn't really need it like uh what it really needs is professionals that have got project skills that can approach a project without having any contact with it whatsoever and successfully bring that project forward uh in as, as quick as possible there's in terms of like a job for life sort of thing and you know keeping a project going for all time that's kind of false because your developer doesn't develop it's like i'm trying to get uh the idea across that uh every project that you work on it's yeah keeping the client happy who's actually paying you like is priority number one but also bringing projects forward for everybody's sake 
including your own sake? Because if you have a software project, whether it's for an internal customer or an external customer, and it's not a living, breathing project out there in the world that takes full advantage of the internet, web, you know, hundreds of thousands of users, metrics, you like in terms of uh, project management metrics, which is all important. You can't ever achieve that. And the same with these security features that are built into .NET or uh, LDAP and DNS and stuff like that. It's, it's the same. As an individual programmer uh, making little software and stuff like that, it's all good and well, but there's also in the real world what it takes to keep it up and running and, and delivering it 24 7 365 and not only that have that necessary amount of complexity oftentimes i use the metaphor it's like an egg yeah an egg does better in the nest so you have to build the nest for the egg to go in yeah and that egg will be your idea or your project or your video game like but to realize that project the egg or whatever if it's a hatch you know what I'm saying? It needs a necessary amount of a nest around it. Or another metaphor I use often is that of a hovercraft. It costs lots of energy to get the hovercraft off the ground. Yeah, and they're, they're the sort of areas that we've been concentrating on. Uh, the C++ ASAP project in particular. Like, is a necessary, necessary amount of energy to get the hovercraft up and running. Okay, which is where everybody's struggling, uh, really. Because they don't have the project up and running to the point where like they've got the sort of like so you need the necessary amount the necessary amount of air to puff up and then the hovercraft with simple amount of energy now that you've created the cushion of air the hovercraft can move around with least amount of energy you see and that's the concept we're trying to teach you the c plus plus asap you need a build server you can't have everybody building on their own computers. It's the same with Blender. We used to do render farms. So your project, instead of your developers stretching out the project for all time and squeezing it for maximum amount of pay, like which is what is it is an issue. Yeah. Well, it, you know, if we're going to spend ten hours at work rendering, that's not really that's not really how it works in the real world, in real life. And it's the same with C plus plus. Well, you don't. You don't spend two years developing a project and then build it and then push it because that two years built it's like lifting weights and stuff like that if you spend the next six next year or whatever eating lots of food at the end of it you'll just be fat like so there's a different mentality really so that's so really what you need to do is like put the egg in a nest or build a nest for the egg or like the hovercraft you need to get some huffing and puffing to get it off the ground yeah, that way it takes minimal amount of energy to push your software project. So you do the C++ ASAP. You, you create a build system, you create a compile system, you create an application hosting system, and you also have a bundle system. As well. It's easy to get out there and install. And once it's installed, it interlinks back to the website. It has security features in, for example, Active Directory, DNS, LDAP, so that if somebody happens to get a copy of the bundle and they open it up, the software inside of itself knows whether it's in a legitimate hosting environment or not. Uh, for example, then what do you do? You push guaranteed builds. So, a bit like in the real world, really. Adobe, for example, it's, it basically gets updates all the time because you already have the application. And like the Adobe Creative Cloud is a great example of it, how, 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 how it's done, really. Say even from C++ programmer's perspective, if you're not really artistic or creative, not just generally a user of the product, that is kind of how it's done. Like that, you kind of need that amount of necessary complexity. It doesn't really tend to reveal itself at individual level, but at group level or at armada level, yeah, at fleet level, that's when you begin to realise all of these features that are in or inside of it. Like you know, so. The C++ part, to be honest, is the easy part, really. Most you know, most people we encounter in business, the C++ is good, but the projects don't flow because they haven't, you know, they've went, like, in, in terms of a perspective, they saw that, or, you know, you spend all these years programming it, or whatever, when it comes to building it at the end and getting it out there and getting a user base and, you know, keeping the project alive and that with necessary amount of users and pay, paying customers and stuff like that. There's a different perspective, really. There's like, there's like, 
like really your project on on the very first day of the project you should have not even bothered programming you should have done the c++ asap the bundle the distribution the automatic updates the metrics and the security and safety basically with ldap dns credentials security certificates before there is even an application you have an empty application but you need that first and then you push guaranteed builds with guaranteed functionality in it like like you don't you don't build the project and sell it you sell the project and build it you don't sort you know in, in that sort of manner especially if it's involving serious amounts of cash in financials and stuff like that a lot of people go for the open source line it sort of thing because they don't want to pay hefty Microsoft fees they do which companies do pay millions a year on which is shocking really but the key issue here is like getting something a minimum guaranteed service delivery level like something that you push the button it's guaranteed to work right, at, at that level because time is money and money is time and the hippie aspect of it is all good and well being like a cold junkie and being a cypherpunk i get it i was around in the 90s like when i was a kid that was what you looked up to you know hacking was getting a telephone call for free basically <laughs> that's about or you know, and that was about it, really, you know. Obviously, the amount of knowledge is massive, really. So that if you can concentrate on project building skills, you've got to, you've got to get a bit further. You're going to get a bit more miles out of yourself. And obviously, you know, it's all about the individual developing. All right, so because... It's that massive, really, and it's that broken apart, and there are that many different standards and different ABI build standards and stuff like that. It's it's incredible, really. And of course, we're moving into a new era now, where people are programming for cars, like you like smart cars. And that. Most people don't know that it's against the law. Joe, Joe, if you were to build your smart card, sorry, your smart car, there's basically there's a legal C++ standard. At least it is in the UK. I don't know if it's an American national standards one, ANSI ISO. Uh, but for example, onboard, sort of stuff that is onboard has a different build standard than your personal computer or your or your, you know, your, your, your video game console. Oh, I've got a hit in your smartphone. Yeah, there's, there's, so there's, there is a technical issue there that probably most people aren't aware of. They don't end up working on those sorts of projects. All right, so it's one of them. It's... The whole Adobe thing, it's been good, really. It's, uh, it can be a, a great relief. You know, when you used to work in code, and that, uh, it's a great relief, really. Uh, and it, it's massive, and it's used in industry. Right? It is basically one of the industry standards, so any amount of experience on Adobe is great. Uh, and a lot of it, like, there's... Yeah, there's some C++ 3D graphic artists out there, you know, Blender, Adobe have took a big chunk out of Blender recently by becoming a platinum sponsor and like basically integrating, basically nicking 25 years of Blender software development, basically getting free. Well, you know, people, you know, it's one of them. Like Blender does everything as well. And uh, obviously Unreal Engine, uh, Unreal Engine 5 now is a direct competitor, really. So the, as you can see, there's free and open source and there's pay for products. Uh, basically, Sony actually do one as well. Like they have the whole Sony sort of to, to, for television and film. All right, so the broadcast industry, and I, I suppose it's the broadcast and the communications industry, isn't it? And the materials and packaging industry, so the advertising industry. It's the tools uh, that make the world go round. So if you're looking for a job, it might be a wise idea to get uh, up to speed on some of these digital creative skills. And have a bit of a laugh with it, like uh, it's been an expensive proposition these past six months. Really, I find that if you're making music or you're in a band or an artist, you're probably better off with art computer. <laughs> you probably, you know, you're probably best off just paying some recording studio time. If truth be told, it's better. It's kind of better that way. Yeah, there's. Ah, oh, there's art issues. Sometimes, like, it depends how you want to run the unit, really. Like, it depends on, like, you know, like, your mentality behind it. But out there, down at the film studios and on set, uh, 
it can get hectic. Some of these movies, they, they're involving... At times, uh, some of the films, they're involving, you know... In all, many, some of them, like, you know, they are, they are it's a big job. Uh, it involves thousands and thousands and thousands of people and thousands and thousands of individuals working together. So that, at fleet level, at armada level, you've got to get how that works as well, is how it works at the individual level. That way you know how your work integrates with the whole. Like, but some of these projects are massive, massive projects. Uh, and obviously, we, obviously anybody, can, anybody who's got a mobile phone and a hands-free kit can, can create. You can take shots, do footage. Uh, you can do your raps. We had uh, quite a while back. It's about maybe two or three years now. Uh, we had we had a pretty successful grime artist come through and do 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 very well. Got a letter, got a deal and all that, like which was good. And obviously, a lot of drum and bass has hit hit for the sample pack, and a lot of the templates as well are out there. So you, it's all there free. I think it's free to download on the SoundCloud. If you see anything you want to use in particular, like let us know. Or if you need a particular beat, let us know that. And, you know, there's one thing I forgot to add. Uh, we had a look at the headless phantom mixers, the uh, Behringer. We got Behringer XR12 as well. So uh, if you, we could hire out equipment if you're in or around the city of London, and you need equipment for your project. We perhaps could hire it on a day rate, perhaps. Uh, or we could arrange for some studio time. And, and certainly, I really want to get into the long format audio books because there's, there's, there's a, sort of a big market, but there's a quality issue there. So if you've got a long format audio book, uh, obviously we're still voluntary. We're still a voluntary group. Uh, since we moved on, we haven't had any new audio engineers come through. But that being said, you can always make a donation as well if you feel if you feel it feel necessary, like. So yeah, one thing to remember as well is the remote control mixer. That if you've got a tablet, for example, you can download the Behringer XR software from uh, Google Android, or you can get it directly from the website, the Behringer website. It's the XR remote control software, and see how an analog mixing desk works. Like you can have a bit of a go. And obviously later on if you get onto a real mixing desk, right? I suppose I'm I'm an out of the box guy, even though I started in the box. Like I actually don't really like working with keyboard and mouse, if truth be told. I don't like I think it can be you know still still you know, it's one of them each each to their own really, for every man and religion. So if you forget everything and remember, yeah. Swallows it for one of them. Uh, another smart use of Adobe is graphics. Uh, do you know for decals for people who do want vinyl, vinyl printed graphics? I guess it's just part and part uh, of the economy and uh, the way things go. So yeah, the headless phantom mixer with the onboard solid state recorder, the Behringer XR12, if you want if you have already have a tablet and you can't be bothered with a PC, you can't be bothered with a mixing desk, you don't have the room, you don't have the money, you can't afford it, uh, you're on a budget, we're on a budget, we just about make bills every month, but it's not a problem, then we always recommend the Behringer x series. And in particular, if you've got a bit more wealth and you want your little studio to start, start getting through pretty fast, the Behringer x 18 is the cheapest possible audio over IP solution. So you can just, you can have you and your pals on your laptops with a network cable plugged in, or you could like log onto the uh, Wi Fi. You know, you may have a network switch. You can log onto the Wi Fi, and uh, everybody can send the audio into a real mixing desk. And there's a difference between plugins and uh, analog, a real mixing desk, and a, a VST plugin. Like, there's almost. You know, there's a world of difference. Like, I think, anyway, I I think you can tell. They're getting better. The Isotope plugins and the SSL plugin bundles, they're absolutely amazing. 
and sound better than half the mixing desks out there. True. But then again, with the analog thing, you do get odd buzzes and crackles and little flavours. Like, you know, I have, like, there's a particular channel on my Yamaha mixing desk that for audio, that is really poor quality audio. So basically what it is, the audio's out of phase. There's a phase alignment issue with all the cable when it was recorded. And it it's a damaged channel strip. Any audio's out of phase, I can rotate it around on it. It does the same, performs the same function. Like, like and you have odd, odd things like, so kick drums sound great going through, so if you have a drum machine and you want the kick, it sounds great going through a particular set of circuits, like a particular pathway from source to sync, which is kind of what's going on with VST plugins and all that, on your Ableton and that. Like, it's all very well. Uh, of course, with analog, there's no digital time, so, you know, it's, it's one of them. Really, it's uh, one of them. You're free, to, you're free to make your own way through it. Uh, but the only thing we recommend is that project skills are king. And that when working on any project whatsoever, yeah, of any scale, even if just for laugh with you and your friends rather than laugh with it, knowing how to build a mixing desk for recording studio, knowing how to set up computers, knowing how to build PCs, knowing all of these service skills, they're at the service provision layer, really. You know, a lot of artists and that, well, they know stuff, you know what I mean? Anyway, just through experience in the industry. But they're happy to pay, uh, they have to pay money for studio time. They have to pay for a mix engineer. They have to, have to pay for a master engineer and that. Well, I suppose they've got the money to do it. When you're first starting out, obviously cash is the king. Uh, so, but you can't even start with your podcast. You can start with your raps. I've done... Uh, Rap vocals and what have you. I've done from the most garbage audio quality you can possibly imagine. But after bashing it with the RX audio editor, the Isotope plugins and running it through channel strips and stuff like that, you can get you can get it up. Obviously, people in the industry can tell, but everyday fans can't. Like you know, sometimes you get some cool sounds and effects as well. You get some, you know, you get some new life out of old materials as well. So you can get stems, acapellas, and obviously you can always ask Fred to make a beat. A lot of people do make beats in Ableton, they finish, final, do the master, all in Ableton. And when it comes to loading up in the DJ controller or whatever, they get issues. Uh, so that's why we ended up on the out-of-the-box solid-state recorder. Because you, you don't get issues. There's an issue as regards zero decibel gain levels. There's different zero decibels in the industry. <laughs> like, like there's a variety of flavours, RMS, PMPO, etc., like so, and also there's a thing as well where a lot of online stuff can't. Well, you need some stuff basically. If you, if you know, there's a few people around about running local radio stations and stuff like that, entirely online via Mixcloud and stuff like that, doing okay. Uh, they get their little play again and stuff like that. But there's like there's issues, for example, uh, and and especially in the UK, the way the advertising issue works, your radio station the. There's a certain amount of budget to be spent on local radio advertising. Like, there's uh, some legal provisions in law that uh, media companies or whatever, that buy media, that have to spend some money advertising on local radio stations and stuff like that. And this is a big thing for your local uh, little radio station or have you, but you need just some pieces of equipment that you might need to change the audio standard so it can fit into the digital broadcast system. You see, and... That's an issue we've dealt with before, and obviously it's such and such a thing. Worked on such a project, and uh, basically we hit a certain piece of equipment, the PWM limiter, that upped the audio, and down the audio as well if it came above it, and got it at this technical specification, this zero decibel gain. And obviously when the uh, contract came through to go on the terrestrial network, they could get much more advertising revenue, like, as well, they got, uh, they had, like, they had a great reach, a great audience, and they were on the DAB system, which meant that their advertising revenue, they could charge more for it. So that's, you know, it's an issue, you know what I mean? Like, uh, what else did we get? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, before we get, so yeah, we had a look at voice over IP and this Dante a AES standard. You may or may not have heard of it, but uh, basically conference calls as well. There's still some units available if you want. 
your conference calls to be absolutely crystal clear or done automatically where people can speak at the same time uh, as well as you get an extremely high quality audio experience on there. It works mainly with Cisco WebCX, I think it's called, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, it may or may not work with uh, Zoom and all that, you know. It's one of them. Of course, a lot of people, uh, you know, they don't really have time for all of this. And uh, I've done uh, a lot of projects and stuff like that, but really... Like before, I forget the key point of the whole thing. Uh, your personality has has got to get better. Uh, I don't mean that in like I don't. I, what I mean to say is this: every project that you work on, yeah, you should design into it, yeah, training and personal development, like it. That way, and that way, you learn project skills, which means you can hit a project quickly, and you can uh, finish it quickly. Like the idea of stretching out a job for as long as possible in in this game, where it's C plus plus or whatever. That's actually really, really the wrong idea, because though a lot of you know a lot of like there's a lot of intentionality behind it. It's like you know because we we'll oftentimes get called in on projects that are languishing projects. Like the C plus plus builds online. It's for for example, it, almost every single one has been built the wrong way around. Like it's just a key perspective really. So you are working on a project and that you, well, and that's the issue really. And it affects trust in the marketplace anyway, because most people they begin to get they'll switch off and then they'll no longer participate if they want to succeed and get a project over the finish line, but everybody's trying to stretch it out for all time to get a much amount of pay, for example, which is like the whole, that's the most antithetical idea behind the whole C++, the whole software engineering, the whole continuous development, and continuous integration, yeah. You know, the uh, 24-7, 365 roller coaster, like, the whole point of it is, is for it to be the tip of the spear, and it's not, and, like, the idea of taking this project and taking forever, yeah, and stretching it out until the infinite horizon and stuff like that is like missing the whole point of every little thing. That is that that completely and only misses the point. Like, yeah, you think, oh, I'll, this job here, I can finish it in a couple of days. Yeah, so I've got this whatever. Could be a seven million C plus plus source code. Maybe five by the time you finish with it, turn it into a C plus plus twenty project, but it can be done with you know with automation for recursion. Not really, not really hardly any time at all. And the idea that oh I better stretch this out for as long as possible is really false. I the idea is I want to I want to I want to bring this project forward as soon as possible. <coughs> oh, forgive me, a bit of horse front. So and, and then that switches a lot of people off. So say you have a creative project, or, you know, you know whatever, and, and he's finishing now or yesterday, ideally, you know, so everybody can get on with the next project. Because not only if you stretch this project out for all time, every other project that's waiting in the queue is stretched out for all time as well, and we don't really receive the benefits of finished projects. I right, see, and that that perspective and that mentality is really the wrong way around. Like it's better for you as a developer. Really to say, oh yeah, I worked on this project eleven days. Like rather than say, oh I I I used this project. I worked on this project for ten years. Like because a guy that worked on our project for ten years is not as you know that's you know what I mean that's you know that that's, that's really it's not there's not something I would be looking for basically if I was to take somebody. Oh, give me the guy who worked a hundred projects this year. Yeah, or I did this little thing on this project and it helped it complete. Or I did this little thing on this project and it helped it complete. Which is really the whole idea of the skill set and the mentality behind all of this is to, is to give the participants in the project that mentality. Like, you see, because time is money and money is time, but there's also that fundamental trust and fundamental respect amongst each other to know that, you, you, you know, how many people in the creative industry... 
you know, and that's why, you know, industry loves gems. They love creative gems because they can do the project on time or even before time because they know how to do it. They've got project skills, you see. Whereas some people, you know, bad attitude people, uh, there's some, you know, like fantasy C++ programmers and stuff like that, or fantasy C++ is uh, like... You know, because they're a C++ and all that, that's why your project's, you know, nine years late and, you know, a couple of million quid over budget. But then again, nobody, you know, nobody likes somebody to turn up on a languishing project and complete it there and then, because it means everybody gets fired or they get moved on to the next job, which is what they're trying to avoid, which is stupid, really, because once these process improvements are in place, it makes companies a lot of money, far more profitable, if you can build a software project that's more effective, then it's going to cost less money or you're going to be able to s sell to more customers for the same cost. So your cost per customer goes down, uh, which is effective because it makes your business more profitable, which means in the end there's, there's more money available for future work. So going without... Uh, Approaching projects with any other attitude is is really it's a waste of your own time. You may think, yeah, I'm onto a winner here, I'll stretch this out for all time, but that's really reprobate. Like that's not really good at all. Like that's that's dumb. You want to be thinking, languishing projects. I want to spend three days on it max, maximum a fortnight, maximum, like absolutely maximum, really, because it's no good to anybody. Really, it's like. And that you can that's that's really uh, that's really a psychological issue with regards to people's individual psychologies and stuff like that there's right now there's a million languishing projects that need somebody to go in there and kick it over the kick the ball you know over the over you know over the finish line like kick the can down the road forever or just get it tidied up to professional standard and get it signed off and everybody can move on to the next project because this the staleness of your man, like, or your woman in the developer thing, and then you get all that garbage that comes with it as well, like all the personality things and all that, which again is false, really, because we, we, you know, it's a business and it does cost, and your time is valuable, like, as well. So the industry loves gems that can get, get, get jobs brought forward, loves it, you know, and, and that's why it's, it can be a bit. You know, you know, you know, it could be a bit, you know, you know, you know, a bit, you know, you know, it can be a bit, you know, you know, and and then then you think, oh, whatever, Mister Consultant who's getting paid extreme large amounts of cash to work on software projects. The reason why is because he's approaching it with that mentality. It costs everybody, right? And projects the like the life cycle of the idea. That is fundamentally the, the, you know, the grassroots of a project and stuff like that. Yeah, there's all sorts of creative stuff going in there and uh, and, and the rest of it, but there's also got to be an economic reality as well, uh, inbuilt into the project itself, as well as the opportunity to develop. So unless you're approaching the project with this in mind, you're probably not going to get a, an idea about what all this C++ is about and, you know, the rest of it. Like you're probably not going to get it, but when you see that there's been a mentality superimposed on the design, like then you'll get it. You'll see, you'll see what all these little parts are. You'll see what all this all this C plus plus here, and there's all these all these oddities that aren't really the language itself. Like you'll get why that is the how where uh, why what how it integrates with the whole. Like and won't be in that perspective issue so your developer can be in that frustrated perspective issue and be in that place where they're on they're on some like tiny little some assembly language call it a single assembly language instruction so that they're zoomed in at that level which is totally stupid because you need to zoom out and see it in its entirety in its whole in its wholeness and you can you know go out on a thread like that for all time and that is what we're trying to uh, identify and also cut it out and actually goes back to a mathematical theorem 
called Chaitin's number. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Or Chaitin is what I think. So, Canadian or French mathematician. Uh, but anyway, it's to do with the probability of a Turing machine completing, basically. So, so if you take replace the probability of a Turing machine completing, the probability yeah of the job getting done, like whatever that happens to be, whether it's you know whatever product packaging design etc. Like, so you know, and what is the probability of it finishing or going on for all time forever? Like, and then. Then the investors who put the money up in the first place and, and the people who genuinely spent a lot of time, money and effort on the idea and the ideal uh, are, are totally ripped off. They're robbed. They're ripped off. You know, it's, they've been fleeced and the project doesn't get done. Like, so we just replace that mathematical concept. What is the probability of it? Like, and that's really, that's something that he's cutting out and he's identifying, yeah, and it needs removing like cause it's not it's not the it's not that's not the game like it's like that's like that concept itself is a really it's really a false concept like i mean a lot of people put a lot of art you know the hearts and minds and the souls and a lot of effort and a lot of cash and a heck of a lot of time on some of this creative work and treating them that way is really really not it's, it's, certainly it's not good it, that one's it will it wants rooting out and also on the other side of the cash transaction, yeah, you want to be taking on people who have had that amount of sympathy and concern for your work. For example, if you're in a band, you made all these recordings, you spent whatever fifty hours recording an audio book. Like you don't want to, like that and that issue here is an issue, really. So this is another source of uh, another bone of contention really, that like means that. For example, you've got your audio book or whatever, and, and you could be, that could be out there on Amazon, Audible, what have you, and you could be making sales. We got uh, speech recognition tools in Adobe that we can make the ebook for it as well as do some fancy graphics. Again, allowing art, uh, artists, creative individuals, writers, uh, filmmakers, stuff like that, to earn a living, and like like and like you know they've got to look out for vampires like basically it's like we're going to vamp them and just fleece them as well so that kind of ruins the industry by people you know people made be they made the racial lyrics stuff like that you know and they want it treated right like in the hands of somebody that's not going to just you know insult them basically and you know fleece them all that all the cash like it's just not good well, that's another, another, that's another grumble. Uh, well, that's another grumble off my chest, like really. So you got got to be mindful of that. Uh, it's a work in progress, you know. It's a continuing development. So always about that, really. But project skills are, are what's necessary, really, because it releases. So we have to look at, like I've said on, on previous channel news and previous episodes, start at the end and end at the beginning, conceptually. Like, there's a lot of madness goes on, on on set, you know, there's all sorts of crazy going on, and it looks like chaos, and hopefully not a lot, but when the millions and millions of people watching the show on telly or the film or what have you, like, that's that's in the mind of the creator, like, the director sees it, sees that, or perceives that, and everything else is like a division of time from that perspective, or that perception, like, yeah, just... Very real, and it is sometimes completely mundane tasks, like like checking in film and tagging film. Completely mundane, takes forever. You spend seventeen hours on it, or whatever, you, loading cassettes. But never that's necessary because it means that the comp team they can go on to make adverts, uh, trailers, teasers. They they can really you know get involved in the storytelling process. You know, somebody's got to do that job. Then the composition team, they, they've got access to the film. Uh, the audio team's got to do its part, so the composition team get the sounds right, full A, all that. So it's just got to look out for them little grumbles, little gremlins, really. Cause... It's all, the, the project skills themselves are superimposed on any project, whether that's C, Adobe, whether it's making records, making music, uh, film. 
and that like, it's just like a, min- a perspective. All right, then I've I've run out of steam. And that's that. Thank you very much for the attention. We really, really appreciate it. We're just going to go into a post now, and just we'll just use Adobe Premiere Pro, and we'll use this Adobe Audition. We'll just bring them two together and post it on YouTube. So once again, uh, if you need help along that line, hit my SoundCloud up. Uh, there's a link somewhere. Uh, I'm trying to think what else now. There's got to be something else here. All right. Uh, Yeah, the C++ project, there's a Visual C++ project we're working on. We're adding the Xbox controller and that. Don't have time at the minute, but I should get that done ASAP. We followed a really cool tutorial and that got us, uh, basically, we went from C++ ASAP to C++ ASAP on Ubuntu with OpenGL. And then we went from there to C++ Visual C++ with DirectX 12. And then now we're going to add build for the DirectX 12 one. All right. The Microsoft Game account, you know, it's only a few quid really to log on, that's a lifetime membership. Which, again, corporate control over it, uh, it's one of those things. Uh, I suppose you'd have to look on the stock market and have a look at the stock prices of Microsoft, of Adobe, and all of that. Uh, Avid. Uh, see, see, see how it's going, because they've got... Money itself behaves a certain way, even above and beyond any particular project, though, as well. So you've got to manage the people who are paying for it, as well. Who, whose money is it anyway? Whose cash is it anyway? But then again, with creativity, you can also build it up from the ground up, from you know, from the ground up, right? Which is kind of like there is that uh, juxtaposition. Is it? Is it a simile? A metaphor? A duality between between that order and chaos, like where you know you got like sort of like the industry bods who, who's, who's cash it is it anyway, you know, and who's paying for it. You got all the mad creative cats who's just got mad ideas, you know. And then you have all the madness where the two meet, you know, where all the chemistry occurs, you know, between yin and yang. That is everyday work. Well, hopefully, yeah, uh, something good. Yeah, next. Uh, oh, yeah, so the next build. So we did the uh, build, PC build. We built the cheapest PC. Then we built an Intel, 12th gen Intel. Uh, with 4 gigabyte graphics card as well. Times 4 PCI lanes. Now, that is actually just something I do want to mention, actually. The way Intel have cold-shouldered the market, in a way. Like, because... The... Obviously, there's generations and all that stuff and the rest of it, but that's forcing everybody into the new gen, like, by force. Like, so, all these PCI 4 graphics cards, they don't really work with the Intel 12th gen, do they? Like, they want to times 4 PCI lanes, or something like that. Unless there's been a firmware update, so that's now forcing everybody onto the new standard, really. So, it's one of them. Reviewing the i5 12th gen... If I were to build it again, what would I do differently? I would, I would probably use the i3 with the onboard 4K graphics. It's cheap, about 130 quid for the chip. So that means that you can get in there with a motherboard and chip for about 220 quid. So if you have any PC, as long as it's got PCR4 RAM, you can get in there and get the i3 with 4K. So you can't say it's spoiled. This, this one unit is at 1080p. So obviously when it comes to Adobe rendering 4K, you've got the physical hardware on the chip, you see. Whereas for us to render this uh, 4K on the box that I've got, uh, if you refer back to the YouTube build video, we actually have to use some 4K circuitry or emulate it in software, you see, which means it's less, near, or less you know, it's slow. Because we'll swap it out with a 4K graphics card, but the times four PCI lanes don't exist on that, on that generation. I think could be mistaken. Yeah, so yeah, if I were to do that again, I'd do the uh, i3 with 4K onboard 4K graphics. All right, definitely. Yeah, it's usable, pretty powerful, usable, pretty flash, future proof ish. So maybe in about a year's two's time, you're gonna get. Uh, 
DDR5 RAM and uh, PCI5 graphics cards. Second hand, there'll be PCI5 and DDR5 motherboards as well available rather than paying at full price. Of course, it's one of them, ain't it? It's a new tranche of cash in long term capital. Like, oh, I better get in debt like to, to tune about three thousand pound yeah if you're gonna do that you might as well get one in 360 hertz monitors as well <laughs> like uh but the monthly payment on that if you could afford it that might be the best option really so again we, you know it's one of them in terms of the cash behind it so the money taken to, in, in the investment money to build the next generation yeah and then the money given out in credit at the same time to run on the on the previous generation, so it has inflationary effect. Like, and of course, if if inflation goes up, that means in the future the same equipment. So for your recording studio or your Adobe Adobe project to be able to provide that same level of support, so you've got to look at that. You you've got to look at financial accounts, business modeling, and stuff like that, and budget be really really strict when it comes to budgeting like you have to really so you got to take that into consideration oh will the software still work on my platform we had a garbage windows 10 pc and the adobe update is about so uh, october it was last october it no longer could really effectively work like so previously it still effectively worked even though it was out of date hardware so again that's another issue that forces you onto the next generation you see so yeah the best materials project next generation podcast review ain't it? that's what today's been uh really so then um, uh, where, where else have we got to go uh, to start these explorations uh now sh- 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 somebody will have an idea somewhere so don't forget if you need a beat or you need some audio and pulse hit the best materials project soundcloud and we can run it through somebody's Humble Basement Materials Project Studio. Alright, thank you kindly. Until next time.